Money with Santosh Seru. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Sound of Money. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about microfinance institutions. Well, they're not really main banking banking as such, but they are equally very important when it comes to development of the country and development of the economy. And to talk about that, we have a very experienced banker who has spent 30 five plus years of banking experience from a uh, corporation bank to icici bank then on to barclays but then end of the day he wanted to you know pursue his dream you know to work with a social institution and that's exactly where our guest today uday kumar hebbar who is the md and ceo of credit access gramin uh, which is a bangalore based uh, microfinance uh, enterprise joins us on this edition of the sound of money hello and hi and welcome uday hi hi thank you pleasure to be here santosh thank you and so glad to see you after so many years <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> so uh, well uday uh, gramin banking uh, rural banking as we all know uh, for mbas right Uh, rural banking is something which is uh, to always have on their uh, CVs, right? Uh, but you have seen this uh, grow, uh, and it's something which is very close to your heart. Tell us a little bit more about Gramin Access and also about the kind of customers you come across in this bank, or I would yeah, not even sure. say it's a bank. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it it is a financial institution basically providing credit to the rural uh, underbanked households. No. that is what uh, we do so gramin kuta is is a brand actually in this microfinance which has been working almost two decades i joined in 2010 uh, when uh, when i moved out from barclays uh, to pursue my uh, thought on this microfinance because i used to be lending to this institution not just gramin not to entire microfinance institutions i used to lend from icici so at that time i was thinking that that now this microfinance can be done very efficiently very socially relevant and and with, with a very responsible way so somehow i had a, at that time i had a dream to be the the, the social entrepreneur uh, working for this microfinance but yeah during the and then during barclays days i made it formed up my plans and i joined it in, in 2010 so gramin kutai was at that time a small institution having about uh, 3 lakh customers working in karnataka and then having some 250 crores of portfolio so from there today uh, with we are we are 10 years time uh, this is today the largest microfinance in the country listed in mumbai stock i mean both stock exchanges in india and uh, today we are working in 14 states uh, we have about 30 lakh women borrowers across across uh, this 247 districts in 14 states wow. Uh, working with close to 11000 employees about close to 1000 branches so we did uh, we did actually leap progress from that 250 crores to uh, close to 11000 crores 11 plus 1000 crores today mm-hmm. and then reckoned as a largest microfinance institution yeah having said that gramin kut gramin kuta is which is one of the, as a brand so we transformed it into a company called credit access gramin Uh, when we moved, moved, I mean, when we listed the company, we changed the name as Credit Access Gramin to be a sophisticated name uh, to align with our uh, uh, parent institution, uh, which mm-hmm. which is Amsterdam-based um, Credit Access India. So we we try to align the name together as, as a legal name. However, microfinance as a brand remain as a Gramin Kuta. So Gramin Kuta means it's nothing but village group. Gramin is village, and 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 the rural and the group Kuta means in Canada it's group. Yeah. It's nothing but group. So that that leads to the model of lending. It is called joint liability group lending model, which was started in seventies by Professor uh, Professor Mohammad Yunus. So yeah. you know, yeah, a lot here. So yeah, he 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 started this, and that that we imported to India in nineties, and and you know, in two thousand, uh, most institution started. This microfinance institute also started in the similar fashion as an NGO, and then become. the uh, company and that become a large institution today so that's the basic information It started as a model from bangla as a gramin model it's called and started as a ngo then it become nbfc then now it's a listed company so uh, uh, we we are growing growing very well uh, but 
as, as, as we see this, this, this microfinance is one of the most impactful for the rural India, you know, particularly mm-hmm. yeah. the, 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 the households who have uh, low income, lacking credit, who are otherwise dependent on money lenders. So yeah. we have a large, I mean, I, I can talk about the numbers in the, in the going forward, about what kind of numbers uh, are coming out and what kind of impact it is making. Yeah, so we yeah. can talk about talk sure. more about that. Sure. Tell us about the rural uh, your customer, right? Uh, who has been, I think, at possibly the uh, most, uh, you know, has not been that, uh, you know, having access to credit in the first place or banking in the first place. Of course, uh, you know, the the banking uh, policy of the current government and of course access to banking has been now uh, on a very war footing level ever since 2014. But having said that, uh, you guys are. Uh, you know, reach out to the customer at the ground level, right? How has been that experience and what kind of products do you guys uh, have for the such sure. customers? Yeah. See, see our, our customers are uh, nothing but the low-income household having lack of access to credit. So mm-hmm. they may be doing bank, they may have a bank account, like, you know, the, the, the initiation of the government through Jandan. So all, all have a bank account. They may use for a DBT or they may have some savings, but what what they're not getting is the credit. And that what's the most important for them to do any of their investment. Unless they invest something, they cannot generate or create income generating activity. So without an activity, they cannot generate income. So basically, the requirement is the uh, not just banking; it's a uh, access to credit. So yeah. microfinance helps to. I mean, create an access to credit to the segment of customers. So that is the segment of customers we support. No? They, it is not that they were not getting credit. They were credit getting credit from an informal source. Oh, we can you can also call money lenders, yeah. which is uh, exorbitant rates or yeah. exorbitant terms and conditions. So which, which, which is not a sustainable for them. But from the centuries, they have been dependent on this informal credit. What, what microfinance institutions do is to create a formal way of borrowing, formal way of, I mean, what you call, creating a habit of borrowing, paying a, paying a regulated interest so that they can start their activity. You know? well, to, to, give, to give an example, maybe a family who would work in a, work in a agri labor or somewhere or Amnarega labor. So what, what they would do, they would go and buy a cow. To buy a cow, then it, 40, 50,000 rupees. Yeah. So what yeah. they would, they would come to microfinance and take a loan. They continue to do their labor, but as a part time, they will do it. They will take care of the take care of the cow, mm-hmm. which is an income generating activity. So yeah. up two years time, they repay that loan and then we'll buy one more cow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correct. No, so there's a double engine to generate the income. So a couple of years like that. So after two years, they would have paid back that loan. Now they have access to other loan, correct? So yes. there's a loan continuously available. So then they will see, okay, maybe one among them will stop labor to, okay, let me buy a sewing machine. Yeah. And then start doing. So now you look at the husband would be continue to go to labor. Wife will be taken care of two cows and the sewing machine. Maybe tomorrow small grocery shop or a vegetable shop. So they keep on doing. This. Yeah. So yeah. in the in the process, they will create multi income income streams so mm-hmm. that they will be able to manage their home properly. They will educate their kids properly. They have a medical access. They have a financial access. So mm-hmm. over a period of time, they will be yeah, they will be able to manage their life much better than what what. Okay. So it's a it's a kind of journey for a microfinance customer. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So that is the segment we we support. Even at that level, they may not be able to get the money from bank because bank would not look at this small loan. Yeah. Nor they may need a. The papers or a land holding or a guarantee or a lot of documentation which they cannot do. Okay. Whereas microfinance is able to do this activity at their doorstep. You, okay. go, you, you create the facility, you, you give this loan to a doorstep, you collect the money from the doorstep with a tiny installment on a weekly basis, even not even necessary to your monthly. You can pay on a weekly basis. So at the at the doorstep at their time. At their place, you are providing the service. Very so with that, microfinance is able to manage this much better, whereas banking is not able to do that. That is why uh, their access to credit 
from the formal banking is limited that is why microfinance is able to support that okay. so that Very is the kind of customers all the microfinance institutions work with okay and what kind of services what kind of loans or what kind of credit is offered to such uh, the customers of yours yeah see what what we look at we look at the holistic need of the customer actually you know see what we observe santosh when we give one loan and when let's say you give a loan for a two for two years so two years i keep recovering recovering that money every week okay we realize that customer still going back to money lender for a some emergency needs for example educating their kids because everybody have an aspiration to send their kid to a better school so yeah. obviously they need money or there is a medical emergency at home so somebody may have to be admitted to hospital you know the money yeah. or uh, repairing the house so it could be connecting the water or uh, building the toilet so as they move upward they, their aspiration goes up or to buy a bicycle so mm-hmm. for everything they they go back to money lending we thought that i think we need to we need to step in here further not just giving one loan instead we thought that let us create a credit line to this kind of clients so that whenever they need money let them knock the door of them interesting so, medical yeah. emergency they can knock the door or even some day there is a i want to travel i know i want just 5000 rupees just knock the door it is like a credit card to our customer you yeah. when you want you swipe so that is what we do right so yeah. they can just knock the door of them so okay. we created a kind of credit line within that they can operate whether to buy borrow for a income generating activity or to borrow for uh, educating their kids or they can borrow to build a toilet for example santosh our clients have built our totally 13 lakh customers have built toilet they borrow from wow very interesting yeah okay. and imagine <laughs> in yeah the, the, in the the last part in years almost four lakh customers connected their watcher from an external source to their home mm-hmm. in, the, in the villages yeah so they can save their time instead of going and walking to get the water the water comes to their home right? yeah so yeah. or yeah. or medical emergencies or repairing their home so even celebrating festival yeah and when when the, the next door is celebrating festival in in my home not possible i can knock the door of gramin and get 5000 rupees and celebrate it with you yeah so yeah. we try to create a i mean book of financial need of customer so that their entire life cycle need it taken mm-hmm. so that, that is a specialty of gramin actually it is quite okay. unique when mm-hmm. compared to microfinance as a, as a business yeah. so gramin did completely differently so that uh, uh, creating access for every need of the customer. Okay, that's great. And what is the, if I may say, a ticket size of a loan typically? What could be the minimum to a maximum? Uh, you know, and that's more one thing. And the second, with COVID, right? I'm sure there would have been massive challenges to be on the ground. But what I understand is rural economy, rural India was not so much impacted last year. Having said that, how have been the NPA numbers, if at all? Okay, so see, uh, the, the, you'll be surprised. My loan ticket size is as low as one thousand. Okay, and that's what it should be. And- yeah. And and that as high as eighty or rupees, so it okay. can go up to there because it depends on if somebody need today. I need thousand rupees for ration. I am there. Just yeah. my loan officer yeah. can give yeah. upfront right now, right there. Mm-hmm. So not even he need to come back and take an approval for that. The mm-hmm. loan officer is empowered to give thousand rupees then and there. So okay. that's the way we build this. So similarly, uh, uh, rural economy. Oh, I agree that it's not impacted, but. see rural economy is always face such challenges and mm-hmm. every time they come out successfully so i always call rural economy is very resilient in india so it is, it is it just because the whole microfinance support what we give is for the livelihood manage mm-hmm. this okay. is nothing to do with the gdp of the country yeah okay. absolutely it may go down 25 or up 25 it won't impact on this client absolutely because Completely the production, amazing. the sales, the service, the consumption, everything is within that economy. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, right. and so long that economy runs, so you need money there, and okay. that the keep that the keep churning the money. So yeah. that is why this this is huge advantage of working with this kind of customers. But it's important to build trust there. It is not just lending money. Mm. You need to be a trusted partner. Then only yeah. your money will come back properly. So that is mm. why. 
the trust of the customer is most important is with us because this is unsecured loans yeah agree yeah very important so what is the, what is security the trust what you are able to build with them is the security yeah so okay. that is why microfinance works yeah. so while covid was there uh, it was it was impacted a bit in the urban territory maybe a, the the city territory where some seg- segment of business which are impacted because of covid i mean give the ecosystem ecosystem of a pilgrimage yeah. ecosystem of a tourism ecosystem of a transportation schools or a large it hubs so yeah. those ecosystem people are not able to run their business even the beauty parlors hair cutting hair mm. hair salon where where the customer in all they had challenge yeah. so we had about 7 8% of such type of segment of customers which impacted mm. but eventually uh, our 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 uh, non paying customers for a gross npa as on march is around around 5.5 6% or 6, 6.5% kind of thing uh, where uh, we believe that we may still we may still recover some more money but we may still end up about 4 4 and up to 5% of uh, mm. npa yeah. not necessarily yeah. only because covid even without covid you would be end up with 4% exactly. npa exactly. but maybe covid will add on four more percent so yeah. so otherwise also there will be everything cannot be attributed to covid but there is npa there is significant increase on the npa as a as a one of the black swan event and uh, yeah covid is not yet over Yeah. It is coming back with the more bigger and more strong. So we have to see how how will impact the next wave now. Of course, that also there is also advantage that this experience of one year how to manage it. Yeah. Right? So okay. that also helps for us. Uh, considering that the high connectivity with customer, high trust with customer, continuous engagement with customer, so yeah. impact on the microfinance is low. No, as as I say, industry also is low. and and for gramin also it's slow so we are yeah. quite quite comfortable in providing for that and we still able to grow this year also mm-hmm. we in even fy 2021 we grew around 15% in terms of a book size why or why but yeah there is impact but yeah we have to consider that we have to respect that impact on the economy mm-hmm. impact on the customers so yeah. uh, it is fine actually if we are we are probably better than the lot Absolutely, that that's good to hear. Uh, let's talk about competition, right? And especially with the with the digital coming in, uh, you know, you have these apps offering credit on the go. Uh, how have you guys been? Because you guys are on the ground, right? Your staff is on the ground, and I think that is very very important. You are in connect exactly. with the customer exactly. vis a vis the digital, where you don't even know whom who is offering you the loan and to whom you are offering the loan. So so how has been the competition dealt with? See, that that difference between the customer segment. Who would access digital finance? Who would access microfinance? Yeah. So I am going and lending to a customer. I not even have any great history of the customer. Mm. Correct. She she may be a a laborer. Yeah. Okay. There is no details data available of her income to me. True. I would only talk to her. I would meet her. I would try to assess her uh her housing condition, and I would give money to support her to create some income. Yeah. Whereas. Digital finance is not. Digital finance will like find some income there and then give them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a big difference. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so digital finance will give money to who having a fixed income, mm. and you can you can view that digitally. You yeah. know that there is a monthly credit to come to his bank account. Then you can do correct. So yeah. it's a two different segment. So some of our segment might move there over a period of time, but majority may be an urban segment or a bit of uh, where they have a uh what you call fixed monthly income kind of thing mm. might move there they may they may they may also access money from bank not necessarily microfinance right mm. so there is a two different segment but but having said that whether digitization is important or not is most important for microfinance to yeah. create an efficiency in this business yeah so to to have a right data to have a right speed of transactions have i mean access to information across geography what you were internet and tablets and yeah. speed of transactions the multiple of today we are handling more than 1.2 million transaction per day mm-hmm. wow. so you need a you need a robust technology system yeah. you need a core banking system we have core bank system 10000 employees moves around with the tablet yeah wow because yeah grip right correct so an employee will be able to talk to customer capture the data capture the other data or what ready 
on on the on the go he can get the within 15 seconds he can get the bureau report that the client and mm-hmm. send back the information to back end he can he can give a decision about the loan at the 30 seconds time wow that's so very good that is a digital we want true <laughs> okay. yeah yeah so yeah. customer may or may not have details because that is not about because even you even though customer is a digitized way able to pay money hmm. high touch is very important in business yeah high touch high touch is most important high tech and high touch correct so we can't expect customer to keep giving money without you meeting them yeah it won't work in bank of finance so yeah. it yeah. will yeah. enhance your ability it will enhance your efficiency and it has it will enhance your quality of data speed everything so that Absolutely. that is where the digitization required from bank of finance the digital financing what today what we look at fintech and all so it is it is it is definitely a slightly different segment do those who have a, a kind of payday loans or having salary the bank account credit of the monthly fixed income such kind of clients who are not really bank of finance clients yeah so they are already okay. earning something through a fixed income so they are not bank of finance clients. so there's a big difference but over a period of time it is important for us to be catching up on that yeah. we should be ready for that but mm-hmm. in the meantime we will not lose the connectivity of the customer that is important yeah we, yeah. we cannot we cannot run a bank of finance without without a touch base with clients it true. won't work true <laughs> I, i like that from for you uh, it's not just high tech but high touch which is very very important exactly. uh, then, exactly. uh, very interested to know uh, that you did mention that essentially your customers are women right which is important because you have uh, an institution completely focused and dedicated to a clientele who has not been so lucky enough so what that's that's one Thank good you. point very good point but is there a plan where you also would like to extend it to the male uh, fraternity within the rural uh, agenda out there so not necessarily now actually because mm-hmm. uh, microfinance works with women there are specific reasons actually who are less empowered in terms of financially but whereas they are most responsible at the home yeah. so they are the people who would be taking care of the home with most responsibility so mm-hmm. which also the, because the group model it's a group of women who know each other well so and that itself is a social collateral to you yeah. so that is yeah. why the microfinance works majority with women for men there are many institutions to give money yeah. so why we should get into that yeah. <laughs> so we are not really so absolutely so, so many are available so i think we would reserve our work with women at this point of time yeah. so i mean yeah. that's, that's a lot i will give an example to you in this country at least 16 crore households mm-hmm. who are low income are actually eligible to get micro finance or mm-hmm. not getting formal finance Yeah. with two decades of microfinance only 6 crore customers are accessing finance today that means balance 9 and half to 10 crore households yeah. still not getting money so we have a long way to work there is a huge opportunity to work maybe yeah. we need another two decade to provide this kind of service to them yeah. so yeah. while that kind of potential is there that kind of gap is there i think it is important for us to people like us the institution likes to keep deep penetrate more and and work i mean the model is working model is fantastic it giving return it give, it's working with good efficiency i think i think we should we should do more but we should do more in rural and deep deep rural that is where the gap today when yeah. you say competition competition is there in urban but in rural the rural there is no one so yeah. we gramin is a most rural focused institution so our 86% of customers are rural so we do more and more to new villages we, we always tell my tell my team please work in the the ways where microfinance not yet worked so yeah. please go there that's good, <laughs> good. that's good so that, that go yeah. there to so you assess to there so that is where the the real real requirement of money is there so yeah. the recovery is not a worry here yeah. it is reaching out to there is so we need to that is what the that is what we need to encourage our team that is what i keep doing Yeah, yeah. Tell us a bit about the numbers. Uh, what is the book size, and and what is the plan in due course, and from where it began? Okay, so it began as a. I tell you, at, at least I joined us uh, in, in 2010 with a 250 crores book, and as on March, we are 11,600 crore book. I mark this that exactly wow. 10 years, 10 and a half year, 11 year kind of thing. So 11,000 crores 
a very oh, astronomical oh, level yeah and we are we had about uh, 12 of 3 lakh clients at that time we are close to 33 million guys now so mm-hmm. that is the size okay so i mean i tell you the growth in terms of industry i can tell because i cannot give a futuristic number for my company so industry industry growth industry has a potential to grow uh, 25% uh, cagr for next five years yeah so okay. which gramin has been always you know in the similar line of industry so that is basically 25% 20 25% cap cagr growth is quite possible uh, maybe the fy21 is a maybe a wash if i 22 we have to see in a normal year it should be able to grow in normal see i don't see any challenge because i i we we as we have touched only one third of the potential market yeah yeah we still have two thirds of the potential market obviously there's a road ahead for everybody true 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 you know uh, uh, let's talk about yourself you know uh, a journey which is like from india to bharat right uh, and i've seen you right we worked together in icici and yeah. in barclays yeah. right uh, yeah. So moving on to a microfinance institution how has been the the journey for you personally how has it i mean it has been your wish i know but how has it been yeah. eventually yeah obviously no it was a, it was my a kind of uh, long term personal goal so that's why uh, i moved immediately even though there was a challenge initially there was a crisis in microfinance at that time when i joined the industry but i was sure about the about the ability to to manage this well so so i have been i was able to do very well in terms of managing the crisis at that time and i am i am uh, quite happy uh, about what i have done so far and probably probably i will retire from this business i will okay. <laughs> do some big up there now we to go long way to go yeah i yeah i have long way to go but uh, but i i i feel uh, energetic every time the day whenever the day i feel in the morning oh i am not quite energetic i will go back to the central meeting meet some customer meet some employees and come back with more energy so mm, <laughs> a... and i feel of uh, feel of accomplishments always there okay uday kumar hebar md and ceo credit access gramin so glad to have you as on the sound of money on this episode thank you thank you santosh pleasure to be here uh, all the best Thank you. Thank you. And of course, uh, the sound of money always continues. We talk about macroeconomics. We talk about uh, financial literacy, is a, which is a very special episode that we are doing month on month. And of course, about banking trends. Uh, what we spoke about bitcoins in our, one of our episodes. And along with this, you can also be on one of our additional uh, programs that I'm hosting, which is Stock Right Today. It's a program where uh, it's Stock Right Today, which is our YouTube channel, which I've teamed up with my friend and my colleague uh, Mayur uh, Kalbag, where we talk about the importance. of communication skill the importance of how to write a cv how to appear for an interview all that and more you get to know on talk right today so do subscribe to that channel as well and of course for the moment from me uh, santosh sirur and uday kumar hebar thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the sound of money thank you thank you bye 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 sound of money with santosh sirur